What's going on guys? So today we are out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas, and we're gonna take a look at this really, really cool, relatively small, even though it's not really that small, travel trailer from Jayco. This is a J Feather. This is a bunkhouse unit, and they've done a lot of things right with this. And real quick, before we start this tour, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button so you're notified when new videos come up and you can see all the different floor plans that I come out here to show you all. I'd really appreciate it. As always, let's start by taking a look at the numbers on this unit. So this Jayco travel trailer is gonna have a gross vehicle weight rating of 7,500 pounds. It's gonna have a cargo capacity of 1,817 pounds. It's gonna ride on 14 inch D-rated tires and it's gonna have twin 3,500 pound axles, which gives you 7,000 pounds axle capacity, 7,500 pounds fully loaded. It's good numbers because a lot of the weight, or at least a percentage of the weight, is going to be transferred to the back of your truck. In the case of something like this, I would generally recommend something like a three-quarter ton truck. It doesn't have to be a max tow package or anything like that, but a three-quarter ton truck would definitely give you more payload capacity to be able to handle the weight. But let's take a closer look at the inside of this unit. We'll come back out and take a closer look at the outside. Coming around, it's got the Lippert solid steps. I love these because they're extra wide right here in the platform area. You don't have real large side portions here which kind of make the steps narrower. So you get really, really wide steps. Asdell composite panels on the outside, which is really nice. All right, let's step inside of this 22BH for Bunkhouse. So the slide is currently in. And this is kind of important. I know there's a lot of folks who are constantly asking me to pull slides in, and I don't do that. I don't come out on dealership lots, plug power to these units and pull slides in. I, I don't know what PDI they need. I don't know what condition. I just don't wanna mess with them because they're not my units. But the slides are already in on this unit. And as you can see, there's a clear path all the way to the back. When I was scoping out this unit at first, I didn't even realize it had a slide out. I stepped inside and I was like, wow, this is actually a really cool floor plan because you know, it's compact. You still get a lot of really cool amenities. But then I looked up and I saw the trim. I was like, man, there's a slide out in this. So if you push this slide out, which you don't actually have to do, it's going to give you a lot more floor space right here, which if you have kiddos, if you have other people in here, if you simply want room to move around, it's going to give you that, which is really, really cool. I appreciate how they've done that. Now, this normally wouldn't be in the way when the slide out is out, but because the slide out is in, you can see how it kind of takes up about half the door space. But when the slide out's pushed out, you can have that up and you have plenty of room. With it in, you can even have it up and still have some room. You just have to kind of squeeze around it. Dual basin sink, it is a plastic sink. It has a standard faucet on it. Looking over here, the TV is kind of blocked right now. So if you want to watch TV, you definitely want to have the slide out out. Got your theater controls right here. Have this kind of faux wallboard material in the back, which is thicker than you might think. You can actually see it right there. It's not just like paper. Good size kitchen area and cabinetry area. The only thing I think this kitchen is really missing, which I would love to see, are drawers. I would even say sacrifice this cabinet door right here and put maybe three small drawers going down because it's always good to have drawers for silverware and utensils. Other than that though, it's a very, very good size functional kitchen. Um, and the colors look amazing. I love how it contrasts between the light tones and the dark tones. And then when I swing around behind me, we have this. Some extra storage there for some shoes. You have storage underneath it for shoes. You have a place to hang up your clothes or your jacket. Really nice, plus some cabinetry above. You have more cabinetry above here as well. And that's why I think they could probably sacrifice that one cabinet, but check that out. But you didn't see that coming. So there in fact are drawers here. It's pretty cool, huh? So I didn't expect to see that. I was kind of messing around and, and I realized, man, there's no drawers. Then I opened that up and bam, there's drawers. So that is really, really cool. Got a compact Furion microwave, three burner gas cooktop. You have a small little oven here, but you can cook cookies and pies and things like that in there if you want. Over here, you have your Furion 12 volt refrigerator. Really nice, good amount of space in there as well. And you have some additional pantry space over here. Would have been nice to see a few more shelves in here. Swinging around, booth style dinette, which converts into a bed. You have your furnace vent down here. Then you got a huge pantry storage area in here. Very nice. Beneath it are your breakers, fuses, and all of that. And then your furnace is down there. 
Here's your bunk area. This actually drops down. So I believe it's pinned in place right now with this up top. Let's see here, we gotta figure out how to do this. There we go. That drops down, that flips over, and you have a bunk area. If you have mountain bikes, things like that, you can also put them in this space with that up whenever you're traveling, which is really nice. Keep it inside if it's raining. Then you have another good size bunk up here. Great spot for the kiddos, nice and private. You can close this curtain right here, close this area off and give yourself some more privacy. They give you a handle up top to be able to kind of pull yourself up. Stepping into the bathroom. This is a good size bathroom for a trailer this size. Has a really, really good size basin on the shower area. Nice and bright in here. Nice window over here. Got a place for towels, toiletry. Hang some towels from there. Got some cabinet storage underneath here as well. This is plastic toilet. Got a little space right there. Not sure what you would put there, but you have the space. Little sink in the corner. Good amount of room around it. And a small medicine cabinet as well. Very functional bathroom. And I like how that bar radius is out so you get a little bit more room inside. What do you guys think of the bathroom in this unit? All right, swinging around. Let's work our way up to the bedroom. So I like the fact that they put a sliding door here. That's really nice. So you can close this off. It's not just a curtain. You actually have a dedicated bedroom up front. You can call this the master bedroom since there are bunks in the back. Nice blackout blinds as well. I like that they put the little drawstring here as well to pull them. Nice non-frameless window so you can open these up and get great cross ventilation through the inside of this bedroom area. Especially if you're in a cooler climate area and you want some great ventilation. This kind of pushes out and props up, whereas this one slides up completely. You have some good wardrobe storage here next to the bed for hanging storage, as well as a shelf and some space beneath it. And then this area extends all the way back, so it actually opens up in the back. There was some power so you can plug your smartphones in, your tablets, charge things up, or even use a CPAP machine. But they've done a great job in here. I think you can option one of these with dual air conditioning units. This one has one air conditioning unit right there, but they give you a fan here, and then they also give you a fan here. So again, if you're in a cooler climate, just open that up and have the air blow inside. Your controls are right over here. Not a heck of a lot of controls really needed. And then you have a tankless water heater on this, which is also really nice. Very cool. Let's step outside and see what the outside of this unit is all about. Okay, so now that we're outside, real quick, the MSRP on this unit is $52,897. Sale price on it's gonna be significantly less than that. So you're probably gonna be able to get this for at least $10,000 or more less than that MSRP. Starting up front, you have an electric front tongue jack, spot for two batteries right here, spot for two 20 pound propane cans, front hatch door, it's not super thick, but you typically don't see super thick doors on travel trailers. Huge pass-through storage. Got a lot of room inside of there. Plus you have this really cool little outside tray for your barbecue pit, which plugs into the side of the RV over here using a really cool J-port that they've uh, included on a lot of their RVs. You have electric stabilization on the front and on the back. Good size awning, pretty much spanning the whole straight part of the roof up here. I'm mean, gonna guess that that awning is probably about 16, 18 feet long. Again, Asdell sidewall construction. You have a light switch there. This is for your portable water. The water you take with you, fresh water. Outside of your furnace, power out here, antenna connection for your satellite or antenna. You can move the TV from the inside to the outside with that bracket right there. Goodyear Endurance tires has a standard equalizer on it, not upgraded. This opens up. First, you have some speakers up here as well. Nice outside kitchen area. Would have been nice to see a small sink out here, to be honest. Definitely have a drawer here. You can charge phones, get other things going here. Bottle opener inside of here. Outside of your on-demand water heating system. That's that J port I told you about. It's just basically a two inch receiver that you can plug a tray into or various other accessories that they have. This would be used, of course, to hold your barbecue grill. Coming around this way, you have a four inch tubular bumper. Great place to house your sewer hose. 
ladder to get on top. It is wired for a Furion wireless backup camera, LED lighting, and the lighting, when you use a turn signal, it flashes not only on this side, but all the way down the side of the side you're gonna be turning towards. This is a really cool back hatch storage. So again, once you flip this up, you got all this room back here and you could secure mountain bikes, things like that back here, no problem. Great way to keep them in if it's raining outside or at night whenever uh, you know, you're at a campground, you don't wanna risk getting your e-bikes or your mountain bikes stolen. No hitch, no receiver on this unit. It's gonna have 30 amp connection. It'd be 50 amp if you had twin ACs. Here's your sewer connections down here, your gray and black tank handles. Low point drain, you have an outside shower, really nice. Great way to clean out this whole area whenever you're done. Your city water connection right here and your black tank flush. This is the outside of your refrigerator. This is your vent. If you're gonna be cooking outside, or sorry, if you're gonna be venting anything and you want that vented air to come outside when you're cooking, you wanna make sure you open these flaps. If you have them closed, you're just gonna be recirculating that air on the inside. This right here is storage. So that is really cool. This is a great place to put all your sewer stuff, maybe a air compressor. Really, really great storage on the outside of this unit. Coming around, other side of your pass-through storage. And this is prepped for a Furion side view cameras as well. So you can put cameras on each side as well as a camera on the back. So you can get really, really good visibility all around your trailer, especially if you have struggles, you know, backing your RV in. Anyways, guys, what do you think of this unit? Please leave a comment below. I'd love to know your thoughts. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.